All right, guys, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm continuing on this series, showing you how to uh, get like a professional project from Premiere, full high quality, all the way to Resolve by flattening uh, uh, your, your effects, your generators, other things, uh, and, and effects and generators inside of Premiere, and uh, being able to get it properly put into DaVinci Resolve. So I've got a sequence here that's been finished, fully prepped, and this is ready to go to color grading. So the next step here is going to be uh, to export out what's called an XML. It's uh, This is like in the Final Cut Pro, you go to File, Export, and we're going to go Final Cut Pro XML. The Final Cut Pro XML is from the earlier Final Cut Pro days, uh, from Final Cut 7 and, and earlier. This uh, XML was like, a, it was called an EDL, but it's an EDL on steroids. It contains a lot more information, uh, works really, really well in, in, in DaVinci Resolve. It makes things move over really, really easily. Uh, but this is basically like a universal editing decision list, which basically tells your timeline how to edit the clips that it has. So I'm going to go Final Cut Pro XML. It's very, very small file. It's just the information that tells it where, where to perform the edits. But we could put this, let's put this EDL in the red, in the high quality folder. So I, I remember where it's at. We're going to call, call this just final, final edit for color grading, maybe biscuit. Let's call, let's call it biscuit, biscuit for color grading there. So we know what it is. Okay, hit save. And it just takes a second. And it's done really, really quick there. So it's exported out that XML. Uh, and now I can completely uh, close Premiere. I don't need it open anymore. And finally, we can open Resolve. I guess we did open Resolve in the first episode, though, so uh, to do our proxies. But here we go. I'm going to start Resolve. And once Resolve, Resolve opens, I'm going to start a new project. I'm going to right click on the Untitled Project, say Save As, and we're going to call this one Biscuit Color Grade. Save that. And now let's say we want we can change the resolution later if we want to, but let's say right now we're working on a 2K on a 2K screener that we're going to be sending to a film festival to be screened or something like that. So, uh, so I'm going to do a 2K, and, and this is actually the proper resolution if you're showing it on on a big screen. Uh, most movies are projected in 2K, uh, with the exception of IMAX right now, and there's a few theaters that do 4K, but uh, but most theaters project in uh, 2K. So I'm going to go to Project Settings here, and we're going to set up our settings here for proper 2K. I'm going to pull down the timeline resolution. We discussed already that we wanted this in uh, 2K DCI, not T, uh, not DCI flat, but, but DCI, which is 1.89 to 1. I'm going to select that. Our timeline is going to be 23.976. That's our time uh, our time base there for our 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 footage there. So there's going to be 23.976. Everything else is, is, is pretty well set, but those are the main things that we're going to set there, just the resolution and the frame rate. Other things can be changed later if you want to, but once you set a frame rate and you start editing, you can't change you can't change the settings on the on the frame rate. You can change the resolution, you cannot change the frame rate later on down the line. So I'm going to hit save, and we don't want to anyway because that's what the project was shot in. So now that that's set, I'm going to double click and open our project. And we're going to start off with media here. We're going to go to media, and I'm going to import all my high quality footage now because the EDL is going to be looking for footage and it's only going to look for the footage that you import into uh, DaVinci Resolve. So we're going to kind of trick it and we're not going to uh, import we're not going to import the low quality media, the proxy media. We're going to go to our red footage and this is where we saved everything. Card 1, card 2, here's the effects there's those three effects we did and here's our black video, closing credits, and open title. And if we want to, we could actually create a folder for these things. Since we have a folder for everything else, we could actually start a new bin here and call this like generators. And then go to the master files here and grab these three shots and drag them to the generators folder. So everything's nicely organized into these folders. So card one, card two, and this is all the high quality. This is all the 4K stuff here, the 4K and above, 4K plus. All right, so once we've got all of our media, so it's nice to keep everything. We kept everything everything high quality in one folder. It was in the red folder. We kept everything low quality, the proxies, in its own folder as well, like the effects, the generators, everything. So now we brought in all the high quality media here. We're going to go to edit. We're going to go up to uh, file, and we're going to say import. Timeline is what we want to import, and here recognize this, this is uh, import AAF, EDL, or XML. We're going to import an XML, so the Final Cut Pro XML. It's asking where it's at. We put it in the red footage folder, 
There it is right there. I'm going to select it, and this is basically our timeline. I'm going to hit Open. It'll bring open a little preference thing and say, do you want to automatically set the project settings? No, because uh, we we chose what we wanted our project settings to be at, the 2K resolution. Automatically import source clips in a media pool? No. This is the best way to do it, not do it automatically, because we don't want to automatically bring in, it might automatically bring in the proxies if you do that. So we're tricking it into attaching it to the high quality by doing by unchecking these two things. We hit OK. Oh, and uh, let me cancel this, by the way, because I forgot to bring in one thing. It's going to tell me that something is offline. I forgot to bring in the audio. So let's go back. Let's grab our sound and drag our sound in here as well. So now we have the sound in there as well. So now we have our sound in here as well. Uh, that's that's the only other thing it's going to be looking for. So I'm, now I'm going to go to edit, and we'll do the same thing here. Edit, import, XML. I usually forget the audio, but it doesn't matter if you don't bring in the audio because we're just doing color grading. So I'm going to select uh, XML, open, uncheck these two, as mentioned, and hit OK. And it's asking what folders to find the media. Right now I'm telling it just to find every look under the master folder right here. Because you could have the you could have the proxies in here, and you could have the the red the high quality in here, and tell it just to choose the high quality. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to because we've got all we've got in here is the high quality. I'm going to hit OK. I hit OK, and boom, everything's restored. Uh, perfect. As we play through this and look at this. One thing that it does it, that it does, does bring in Command Plus zooms up in here. It brought in the cross dissolve. It understood the cross dissolve there. That fades into that video clip. Uh, it's got, look at this, the title fades in and it's, uh, it, recognizes the alpha, it recognizes the alpha channel over the top there. At the end we've got our closing credits and everything that they fade in. So we've got everything all set in here. And it's using the high quality footage. Everything is, is 4K and above. One other thing I need to do to fix this to get it going are two, two things we want to do here to get this ready to go. First of all, you'll notice as we play through it, it's got, some, it's got the, the LUTs that they recorded uh, the red camera into. We want to like make everything basically the flat log profile so we can start grading this stuff. So we've got to fix two things. First of all, we've got to fix these pillar boxes and these letter boxes that you see here. So we're going to so we're going to tell this that we did this with the proxies as well. I'm going to click on this little uh, project settings down here in the bottom right hand corner on the little uh, settings thing there. And I'm going to go to image scaling. Image scaling here, we're going to tell it to input scaling. We're going to tell it to scale full frame with crop. We save that, and now look at this. Everything's now adjusted, and it's fitting that 1.89 to 1 aspect ratio. The other thing we want to do is the raw data, data tell everything to be in log footage if it reads raw data. The only stuff that's not raw data in here are these effect clips, but we did have our effect, After Effects artists do that in the flat red profile, uh, red log footage when they exported out uh, the footage. So so even though those are that's no longer red raw data, they exported out in the same profile from the actual original red data. So very important. So I'm going to go back to the settings. We're going to go to our raw settings here. So we're going to go under camera raw settings here, under the settings, project settings. And we're going to change this to red because we all have uh, red footage in the timeline. We're going to go to the bottom decode using and we're going to say uh, decode the, the data uh, based on our project here, our project settings. So I'm going to go down the project settings and we're going to change this to, we did red color four, I believe, uh, for the color space. And we did red gamma, we did we did red log film. Then we we'll scroll down, look at our ISO. ISO is set at ISO is at 320. We don't want it at 320. We want it at ISO native 800, and our color temperature is supposed to be at 3200. There we go. So we're telling the data how to act. We hit save, and now as we play through this, everything's in this log format, this very flat format, and we're ready to start grading our footage. So everything's yep, yep, everything's in that very flat footage. So now we can click on color. And we're all set after that huge process. We're all set to be doing the color grade. Like I said, a lot of this stuff can be done inside of just like Premiere Pro by itself. And you do the color grading and the effect and everything. And, the, and it's, it's all nice. But if you want a nice, big, professional color grading software, this is usually, this is very typical on doing any professional project. Uh, the workflow that's going to go from beginning to the end of the project. Because people, like on a Hollywood film, usually Avid is what's being used to edit. And then the, the effect software is usually a proprietary effect software that might be built at that studio. Uh, like Weta does that, the way they program their own uh, effects software. And then uh, when you sound mix, it's going to be on Pro Tools. And when you color grade, it's in DaVinci Resolve or something else. So this is very typical for a professional project, learning how to round trip all the stuff and prepare things and get it and facilitate it. So when you send it to the colorist, it's going to be as easy as possible uh, for them to just open it up and get color grading on it.
Everything's in here. We're in the color mode. Uh, next episodes, we're going to finally start getting into DaVinci Resolve. We're going to show you, first of all, how to use what how all the scopes work. Then we're going to show you all the, the basic controls in, in DaVinci Resolve. And then we'll actually start grading a project. So in the meantime here, if I'm going to shut down Resolve, I'm going to hit Command S or Control S, save my progress, hit Control Q to quit it and get out of it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope to see you next episode. If you have any questions or comments, please post them. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.